Hi everyone, welcome to the Get Your, your Craft in Order. Um, it's basically Get Your Craft Room in Order each month. And this is hosted by Peppermint. It used to be Peppermint Piety. She just changed her name. I will have it linked um, in a separate part of the video as well as down below all the participants in this collab. I had to make a list. This month is Paper Crafts. Well, that encompasses a lot <laughs> a lot um and it's hard for me because i'm in a transition right now i've been a stampin up demonstrator and still am till the end of june which is only a week away but i'm gonna try and go through my stuff as stampin up versus non stampin up and at some point hopefully before february when we have to do the room reveal i will have merged the two sort of uh, that's the plan anyway. Um, I have a, um, a weird room. It's an upper floor dormer bedroom. So I have slanted ceilings on, uh, one side of the room and I have a big window on the opposite side of the room. I'm sitting at the slanted ceiling slide. This is my paper crafting and video making desk, if you will, that I'm sitting at. Um, and then to my right, there's like a um, sliding door closet that used to be a closed closet turned into storage for my some of my beads. And across from it is a floor to ceiling bookcase, which is my Stampin' Up! bookcase. And then beyond that, I have like a four cube unit that's like an Ikea white unit I got for $10 at a yard sale. And that holds all except for my six by six. Uh, all my other 12 by 12 and specialty papers, um, tablets and other cardstock, which I don't have a whole lot of. Um, and then I have like a card table across from that. And that's back in like a little nook just on the other side of the sliding closet. And I hate that. I want another cube unit, maybe a six cube unit that I have to see if it'll fit. It might have to be another four cube unit. And I want that to be all my dies and stamps because right now, my non-stampin' up ones, because right now they are all sitting on top of that card table and it's not working. I can barely get to it. And then under the table, I have two rolling carts, which I'm going to have to take a picture of at some point here and insert. Um, and they, I hate them. I hate them. I absolutely hate them. They hold my... Um, you know those big kits you get like um, the health stickers and stuff similar to this? They hold all of those and they're not labeled currently and I want to get rid of the carts. And what I would like to do is clean off another shelf on my Stampin' Up! shelf or like I said get a cube and put them all there and do them the way I do my Stampin' Up! stuff. So I'm going to get into my Stampin' Up! stuff now. So, cardstock is first thing. I keep, for Stampin' Up! I keep all my cardstock by color in these job ticket, job order, job ticket holders. I get them in a box of 50 off Amazon. Uh, I don't remember the brand name. I have some that are Avery but then I ordered some off-brand and they work just as well and they hold a full um, sheet I mean a full pack of Stampin' Up! which I think is 25 sheets of cardstock plus a few extra sheets and that is plenty so um, I'm actually going to be except for colors I love like this one I'm actually decided I'm just going to be getting Stampin' Up! has the multi-packs I'll probably get two multi-packs per color family. In fact, I have some in back stash. This is one of their new in colors. I love turquoise, so Tahitian Tide is going to be a favorite with me. So I went ahead and bought the um, the full 25 pack. But um, so it will fit now. It's and what I do then is I put them on their side like like this in magazine holders so that I can see the name of the color and along with the color and right now I keep them by color family so for example well I have neutrals brights subtles regals and then I have the in colors both in uh, one magazine holder for both years 
this is the current one of the current 20 and I usually do that on a label to the year of the in color this is 22 to 24 uh, in color so it's good for for two years starting this past May so that's how I do cardstock I do have some back stock of cardstock and that is on a shelf under where I keep the other cardstock but I'm gonna start once that's gone or gone through I probably will not be replacing it by the whole packs of cardstock like that I'll just be doing like I said the color families um, so hopefully they won't change for a while now um, other cardstock is on that non stampin up is on that um, four unit four cube unit and all of the cardstock fits in one cube um, and that means it's like the the 12 by 12 pads you know like this but that are all just different colors and also some loose um, cardstock in different colors that some of which I got at Tuesday morning um, some I probably got at Michaels in those packs like all the pinks and stuff like that so I have some I don't have a lot and then the cube next to that has all my non stampin up specialty papers uh, that I might have gotten online at stores like I don't know Simon Says Stamp, Scrapbook.com and there's also some specialty on the top in a magazine holder along with some retired that fit in the and these job this is a blank job ticket holder and this one is an Avery um, this is my last open one <laughs> and I think it was a it's a it was I also use these to store my six by six stampin up these job ticket holders and I label them and I turn them sideways just like I do the cardstock so that I know what I have for the current ones now my non stampin up uh, oh my designer paper for stampin up I keep in these 12 by 12 holders they are by cropper hopper I get them on Amazon they're a little pricey they come in a three pack that's the biggest pack I've been able to find I think once I found a three 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 packs of three so I got nine at once if you can find that that was a better deal and I keep all my designer paper as well as my specialty paper in those and I label them and the reason I do that is because I like to keep my scraps of that paper in with that paper I don't want a separate scrap bin because for for designer paper because um, I don't go to it like here if I just need a little piece and I'm using the you know fall colors and stuff I can reach in rustic harvest and find a scrap and use that so this is a new paper by the way coming up July to December 2022 mini catalog and I will not be a Stampin' Up! demonstrator then but I'll still be using it <laughs> then for non Stampin' Up! designer papers um, we'll just do the tablets first like this I keep them on the bottom two shelves of that four shelf cube I'll insert a picture so you can sort of see what a mess it is but and what I do but I have to redo some is I write let's turn it right side up maybe I write the brand the name of it uh, looks this is, must be when I bought it 04 2018 this means double-sided and, si and single-sided I put SS and 48 sheet so uh, I, that's not really critical but um, so this is one I've had since 2018 and I don't think I've ever used it yet because I started being a demonstrator actually in July of 2018 so I shouldn't have even bought this but I, I'm sure it was on sale as a best uh, you know one of they call them special buys or whatever for five dollars at the time so or 5.99 or something so I got it and they're all on a shelf the two shelves at the bottom and then I do have some collections now for example these like I just showed in a haul recently this is from peachy cheap it comes with um, 
It comes with stickers and ephemera. I keep that all together and I will actually put them in this job ticket holder. Now, this would probably go in one of those rolly cards collections, um, but I'm not going to put it there because I will forget I have it and I want to use it. So I'm going to try and organize the one cube to be all collections like this and maybe put some magazine holders in there sideways to hold them. I'm not sure yet um, because they're bulky. They take up some room, but I'll label it first, you know, Paige Evans Bungalow Lane on here kind of thing. Um, so that's how I do my collections. Uh, okay, what did I do? I'm trying to make this quick because we're... Oh, scraps. Okay, so I talked a little bit about scraps of designer paper. Now, when things retire, I usually move them into one of those larger... Um, larger things if there's only a bit left and this is a scrap pile of retired paper it doesn't say that on here i don't think no i took the label off so this is all retired scraps i did a g-stash of a lot of my retire but i have some larger sheets and half sheets and things um and i have two or three of these full plus i still have some um well that is getting ready to retire i still have some in their in their regular pockets like this one there's not a whole lot left in here but i have them next to me on the floor in these right now because there's a few of them that just have a few sheets left uh, i'm going to be working really hard in my scraps to treasures type collabs and stuff to use up this old paper uh, and I need these folders back instead of buying more, right? So my goal is, I'll never, this will take me years to get through, and it's a variety, but I'm going to try and use scraps up. Another one, for example, is um, this one, Ornate Garden, which retired. There's only one 12 by 12 sheet and then these scraps. So that one will be a, a quicker one to use up because this is pretty generic gold foil don't be surprised if you see this coming up real soon <laughs> real soon in a video things like that and uh, another one that I tried really hard to use up already but I didn't quite get there is this um, uh, is this the right one I have uh, I have some other stuff in here now this is called sweet talk but I have something else stuck in here that doesn't belong here Oh, I had some scraps of all my love. I stuck them in with Sweet Talk. But this is in the January to June Mini, and it's retiring. I did use quite a lot, but I have a few sheets left. So, again, I'm going to try and use that up. I stuck all my love in there, too, because there's just some scrap pieces in this. Uh, I took the label sheet and just stapled it in half and stuck my scraps in there. So that's together. And, you know, you get the idea this one i didn't even get into a folder because i ran out of them so i'm going to try and use it up because those kind of folders tear so yeah all my stampin up retired scraps and stuff are currently here on the floor next to me so i use them first my white cardstock scraps go in this bin so um you know if i need to stamp a sentiment and my very vanilla too um, either goes in here or I also keep those in job ticket folders but I keep them closer to my desk um, so for example here's my very vanilla and I have one for basic white and I have one for very vanilla thick for card bases and um, basic white thick which are Stampin' Up's colors Okay, so next up, let's talk a little bit about the tools, um, and then we'll go into dies, embossing folders, and ephemera. I don't know what else I was supposed to include, but next month we're doing stamps and inks and coloring tools kind of thing, so um, I'll get into stamps next month, but I, I do have to show them a little bit, and I'll tell you why in a minute. So my trimmer that I use, um, I'm going to insert a picture. I have two carts under this desk 
One is a plastic three drawer kind of deep drawers. And one is, um, I think I got it at Michael's actually, a one, two, three, four, five drawer, sort of an Ikea style white rolling cart. Um, it's okay, but the drawers don't open fully. But anyway, so I um, have my trimmers on right to my right, this one, and my old one, which is a Fiskars, um, also a good trimmer. Um, so I have those two right on top, the rolling plastic cart to my right and I grab for my Stampin' Up! one because I do live videos so I need to have it handy, right? And that also has a scoring tool which is great because I don't have to pull out a scoreboard. Now I do have this little trimmer which is retired. I use it occasionally. Um, let's see, so that's trimmers. I also have a cart directly across from the rolling three drawer. I have a um, Tiffany cart. And it has side pockets and back pockets on it and in those pockets I keep things like my envelope punch board this score buddy which is coming or whatever this is called it it was a stampin up I got this I think at a yard sale or something I have a mini I don't have a stampin up score board I have this little meet we are memory keepers one which got dirty somehow and I have this Martha Stewart one. In the back pocket an envelope punch board, the mini envelope punch board which I haven't used in a long long time, and also what's this? Uh, oh I guess this was the Stampin' Up! gift bag punch board. I didn't even remember that I had that. I'll have to try it sometime. <laughs> yeah that's that's all in my cart um, I also have my Stamparatus I keep it in its carry bag which came separate um, and actually this I think is it was retired recently I don't know if it's still in clearance or not but I keep my Stamparatus which is the stamping platform the only one I have now and it works for me so I'll just keep it but um, I have extra grid paper. I keep my Stamparatus in here with one of the doors. Now it only comes with one door and, um, and I have upgraded to this foam mat but it has another foam mat too for, pot, for, for using with photopolymer. Looks like I need to clean my Stamparatus. Um, I just bought this Simon Says Stamp Grid Transparency so I'm keeping that in here. And I have an extra door which you used to be able to get um, and then the original foam mat and things like that in here. So I have that all together. I zip it up and I hang it on the other side of my cart here. And that way when I need it I just grab the bag and bring it to my uh, closer to my desk. So that's my Stamparatus. And Let's see, what else? Um, my um, die cutting machine is to my left. I have a two drawer wood file cabinet behind me. I hate that it's there, but I don't have anywhere else to put my die cut machine that I need in quick reach. Um, I have my little mini uh, on the floor behind me because I don't know where else to put it. <coughs> My heat gun is on my desk to my right, as is my glue gun on a glue gun holder, and they stay there because the plug's up on in the back of the desk now. Okay, dies. Let's get into dies. I'm taking too long. I'm going to insert a picture. I have a drawer in that white five drawer that is my Stampin' Up! generic dies. Um, I do try and keep the ones that are that I know I'm going to keep for a long time on magnet sheets and I'll also insert a note of where I what brand I use of those and I get them off Amazon in a box of I don't know 25 or 50 something like that and I like them and I try to keep them you see this one 
fits right in the in the Stampin' Up! original case. That's not a new case. I do keep the Stampin' Up! Um, information in with it and also I keep the original sticky hold on I'm sorry cardboard because if I ever want to sell them I don't usually sell them with the um, see it's stuck on the back of here I don't usually sell them with the magnet because they are expensive and they're also heavy for shipping now I recently did sell some with the magnet sheets but um, yeah, I don't usually do that. I just was getting lazy. So that's what I do. Now, sometimes they come in these bigger packs and these sheets don't fit. Even if I turn them sideways, see, and then, and then stuff comes off. You have to be careful. I really need two in here to include these, but I didn't want to waste a whole nother one. So this I'd have to cut it off to turn it that way. So I just leave it in the pack. Try and put the bigger dies towards the top so the little ones don't fall out. You know, if they get bumped accidentally. And it works for me because they're in this drawer. So that's my Stampin' Up! generic. There will be a picture. Um, now, specific to stamp, I also took a picture of one. I keep them with the stamps. And there will be a picture of my Stampin' Up! stamps on a shelf and you'll see the dies are sticking out like this so let's say this is a stamp case right i stand it up so i can see the label and the dies that go with it are right to the left of it um and i do that because i want if they're like specific to that stamp only um i want them together so i can easily find them i don't store them separately um now that said for example this goes with the Hello Beautiful stamp set. However, they're pretty generic shapes. So what I do then is, uh, let me get that and I'll show you what I do. Okay, so this is the Hello Beautiful stamp set. I write on it the catalog it was in and that it goes with beautiful shapes, dies, and the number of them. So I know if there's no dies right with them, I know to look in my drawer and look for beautiful shapes, dies. You get to kind of know what you have after a bit and what goes with what, but I like writing it on there. And um, if and when this when this retires, I'll put a um, Sharpie marker of an R, and I'll probably put an R on here. And I have retired stamps on, currently on <laughs> in two places. One is a separate shelf out my door. There's a little bookcase that's built in right when you come up the steps and the top shelf of that currently is all retired stamps uh, the other two shelves are jewelry making magazines and such and i need to get rid of them because i never look at them uh, so anybody wants jewelry making magazines let me know anyway um that's a topic for another day if i can clean those two shelves off i will have three shelves to put my holiday stamps on the top one and then two shelves for retired because I also have a file cabinet drawer filled with retired that I forgot about when I just did these stashes. But anyway, I'll get back to that. Okay, I'm going to go non-stampin' up dies next. Um, when I first started out, this is what I used. It's a smaller binder and I was using it to keep the, the dies and in back the stamp and then I also have a stamp behind it which is the same type of theme yeah that was my thinking at the time so here I have sweet stamp shop perfect and the dies right with it and then over here I have a Newton nook which is both animals and stuff and then I have this one with the <laughs> little turtles and froggies um, and the matching dies to go with them so this is what I use. I kept these in here because they were already organized, but I don't know. It's it's not it it works okay, but it's heavy, and I at this point would need like a bazillion of these. So I have the original ones that I bought in this book still. And then, so that's an option if you don't have a lot. 
and I still use as magnet sheath. And then, I, now I'm trying, I switched some of them to um, container stores, but this is one of those like $2 boxes you can get, or maybe they're more than that now, you can get at um, the big box stores like Michael's or wherever. So then I started doing this. Now I want to laminate these. I didn't have a lam laminator at the time. But I labeled them ovals and fancy frames, rectangles, squares, um, stars, hearts, miscellaneous shapes, words and alphas, labels and fancy shapes, tags and memory decks, borders, you know, you get the circles, doilies. So I have them, all my basic shape ones and alphas and things. Uh, over here I have some longer ones that are, oops, can't even see it. Let me go up a little bit. Over on the side, I have some longer ones that are like um, rosettes. And I think these long ones I got at Tuesday morning, which I haven't used yet. Um, and these also rosettes, I think, Tim Holtz. So I have those just stuck in the side of the box. And these other ones, um, now some of them are just in their original folders like this, which I'm glad I just didn't buy something because well, actually I did anyway, but eventually I will move them to um, these pockets with the sheet like this. So this is all labels of different types and I do keep the original packaging in the back because I like to know where I got stuff from and I'm going to move eventually my Stampin' Up! ones will be mixed in with these and out of that drawer so I'm going to need more boxes and some of them are wider so I'm going to take these out and figure out something else for it but this is really heavy and this box is bending so I'm going to look for a wide refrigerator bin the hard clear plastic and reorganize put some of these on the the, um, the sheets it's going to be a gradual effort you know I did some highly used ones little little envelopes and bows that was I used that one quite a lot actually these two a couple different bow dies in there and stuff so ooh, actually that one's tearing I might have lost some dies in that one anyway you get the idea you get the idea so that's what I'm working oops upside down that's why that's what I'm working towards is getting them all on and here's like tags they're nice tags. I don't have the paper in that one, so I don't know where I got that. Probably overseas. There's some spell binders in here. I keep the little little label kind of thing. So I have dies from all over the place that are from pre-Stampin' Up! days. I really haven't bought too many until recently. There's some more little bows. Those were paper smooches. Um, so yeah, um, but and these so these are what I consider like my Stampin' Up ones that are in that drawer. These are my generic ones. Um, I do have some other non-generic ones, and just like Stampin' Up, if they have a stamp set that goes with them, I'm trying to keep them together. And those are in uh, three or four shoe boxes and or refrigerator bins that I need to organize, and I'm organizing them by. Uh, type not by company so they will be let me get this out off of here um, they're gonna be by things like butterflies dragonflies flowers um, uh, critters <laughs> um, house mouse I have all together in two shoe boxes Gorgeous Girls, I have all together in a Gorgeous Girl binder, and I'm probably going to de-stash those because I've used them and I'm kind of done with them now. Um, holiday, oh, I didn't talk about Holiday. Uh, holiday, I'm in the process of reorganizing because Stampin' Up! Holiday, which is what I've been using, the current ones are on my current shelf, which I'll put a picture in, and the non-current ones are on my retired shelf. And I, I, uh, oh, that's the other thing I do. For my Stampin' Up! stamps, I 
not only write on them what catalog, but I use these color coding labels. I have sort of a system. Green means it's a sentiment only stamp. Yellow means it has a coordinating punch because I don't keep the punches with the stamp set. Um, so for example, I have a turtle and friends stamp that just retired and here's the turtle, uh, which belongs in one of my drawers. I'll, I've inserted a picture for. Um, so I just, I put it on like here and blue means it has coordinating dies. And then I can look on the front and say, oh, it goes with beautiful shapes dies if they aren't right there with it. Red means holiday, which for me means mostly Christmas, but that's kind of true with Halloween and Thanksgiving, basically any holiday, but I think of it as mostly from the Christmas catalog. But I'm going to start organizing, that's another thing, like fall, Halloween, Christmas, um, I want to get them all organized together. And all my stamps and dies that are non-stampin' up that are Christmas are in one bin. It's overflowing. I need to go through it and de-stash. But I also think I'm going to put them together with the Stampin' Up! ones on those two shelves I mentioned that have magazines right now. I have a lot of work to do. <laughs> okay, embossing folders. I keep my Stampin' Up! ones that I have, both current and retired, in this basket. It works for me. I also keep my mini uh, um, plates that I use for my mini cut and emboss and some used up plates, the magnetic plate and my embossing plate for my big stamp and die cut machine. I keep the mini embossing folders here in the front um, and some of these, these are all current. This one is retired. I have an R on it. I didn't keep all of them but I kept that one. Um, this one is new but it's a um, it's a tweezers. It's a hybrid embossing folder with dies. So I keep that in with my embossing folders. And then these are not in any particular order. I had them at at um, one point in alphabetically, and I, I gave up on that because when I put them back, I don't tend to do that. But I do it by size. So my minis are up here. My smaller, like four by sixes, are next. I try to keep current ones in front and retired that I loved in the back. And then these are the larger. This is a brand new one coming up. Beautiful leaf ball. And I do keep them with their original paper. And I do that because I don't keep them in the wrapper usually. Sometimes I do. But um, usually I don't because it's too crinkly. But I keep the paper. And the paper gets a little beat up over time. But by the time I'm ready to de-stash them, they're still in pretty decent shape. And that way, I know what it is. And I used to, but I stopped doing it. Um, I used to put, I'm trying to find one that I did that with. I used to label them with the label, label maker. Like here. I have that right on the actual embossing folder. So then when I have it out and about, I know the number and um, what it was Called. It's retired. Pinewood planks, I think retired. Um, but I stopped. I stopped doing that. Well, I should do it again because if they get separated, I need to know the name so I can put it back with the folder. And maybe what I should do is take them out, label them, um, and then keep the papers. I think that's what I'll start to do. I'll keep the papers somewhere else, and I'll just have the the label of them. Um, like up here and that way I'll know what they are and keep the paper separate so that I have a good idea. So this is all my Stampin' Up! embossing folders that I have now and hybrid embossing folders and then all, all my non-Stampin' Up! are currently in this thing. I think I got this at AC Moore years ago. Um, let me open it and I'll show you. If you don't have a lot, this is a good way to keep them. It doesn't take up a whole lot of room. Some of the embossing folders don't fit though. Again, I keep them with the paper from the original company. So 
but I may change that and just label them because they'll fit in the pockets better. And I had them sort of organized like these here are sort of holiday-ish. Yeah, holiday and winter and fall. These also holiday and winter and fall. I have a blank page and then I just get into some generic shapes. And they're not in any particular order. And some of them I can't uh, show you. Some of these I got at um, Tuesday morning is what I was going to tell you. I have not used these for a long time, so I didn't even know what I have. This one's pretty cool. Um, but I've got butterflies and just generic designs and some frames and sun rays. <laughs> so you get the idea. Um, this is all my non Stampin' Up! embossing folders that I have all in and even on, right on the inside of the cover there's some folders and they zip up and it's not full. Um, I don't know if I'll keep these in here or if I'll get rid of the binder and find a longer basket and just put all, I think I'm going to put them all together because they have the name like Darice or Sizzix on them and um, do what I'm doing with the Stampin' Up! and uh, label them with my label maker. And my label maker, by the way, is just, um, I have two, but I haven't used the other one yet. Oh goodness, I can't get my drawer open. There we go. It's um, it's just this I got at Walmart. Dim Dymo Letra Tag. I like it. I actually just bought off Amazon a, a several pack refill thing. You can get the whatever kind of paper you want or even plastic for your labels they come in white paper um, white vinyl or plastic clear plastic which is nice that one might be nice for the embossing folders actually so yeah that's what I use it's easy it works for me it's quick it's portable you know it's not one of these fancy ones that's tied to your computer I just type in and it works for me so, and it's not expensive at uh, places like Walmart. Well, it didn't used to be anyway. I don't know. So, yeah, that's embossing folders. Okay, ephemera. All right. Um, last thing. If it goes with a paper collection like this, I keep it together with that paper because I want to be able to make things coordinating with the paper. So these ephemera packs are going with the Paige Evans Bungalow Lane. I like doing that, um, keeping them together. And then if I have miscellaneous paper, one sec. So, okay, so generic, not specific to paper. I have a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight drawer clear um, pull out rolling drawer unit. Probably got it Michaels or something. I don't remember. And um, one of the drawers, the last one on the bottom, I just throw in generic packs like this. I know I have some in there of K, K and Company. I have some stuff from Tuesday morning that was um, Firefly or something like that was the brand. Anyway, they're all just thrown in that bottom drawer. And that is how I organize that ephemera. And then die cuts, um, I can't get to it right now. But if you have an iris bin, the ones that have the photo containers, I have, I used to keep pre-cut die cuts, I'll probably go back to that again, in those photo containers, and each photo container is labeled with what it is, like um, generic shapes, fairies, flowers, that kind of stuff. Especially, I'll probably go back to that once I start redoing embellishments on the 11th. I will probably keep my embellishments I make in there until I use them. Um, and that's a good way to do that because you get 16 containers in there and that's 16 categories and then you should use them. And once they, you know, a category gets full, use them on projects and um, lower it down again and then refill. All right, guys, I've talked long enough. That's all for now. Have a great day and I'll see you again soon. Bye.